Welcome back you guys to Le Demi Chateau. If you're new to my channel, I am Amadeus and I'm renovating a 13th century chateau that has already been updated uh, like some odd 20 years ago. I just bought this half about a year ago and I've been renovating it and today is the day I am starting the makeover of my very personal bathroom. I have made over a lot of rooms here in here. I have put in new bathrooms, but I have yet to update my own bathroom. So without further ado, I would say let's get into this multiple part series. I'm trying to make it a free video series because it's just a bit easier for me. And I can't wait to take you along and to I've showed you my ideas if you've been following my vlogs. If you haven't, then check out my vlogs. And um, yeah, I'd say let's go. I'll first show you around and show you what I want to do. And today we're updating the cabinet. So it's this odd, ugly thing we're actually updating. And I also want to do the ceiling because I'm planning to do this room in two parts. So I will have a part that is darker than some molding and then we'll have the ceiling and a part of the ceiling uh, in a lighter beige color. So the color palette I was thinking about is kind of moody, very dark. So we're starting off with the cabinet. I didn't want to remove it. At one point I will actually renovate this base completely but this is a budget renovation. I found some stuff to make this kind of furniture look like it's wood. So I want to have this feeling of like dark rich wood. So fingers crossed that it will work and that will manage. It's gonna be a lot of like taping off but first off before we begin I want to start with the ceilings. There is a few holes that need to be closed up in the ceiling and there's also some stuff that we just need to like paint over. We need to remove the light. We managed to do all the boring prep work. So first I wanted to get rid of the spider webs, clean a bit. Then I wanted to fill up the holes and for filling up the holes I used this filler that comes pre-made. I also removed the light fixture that was there finally and um, yeah we just had to remove it to get to paint around that because uh, the new light fixture is a bit smaller. I mean the part that's hidden up so um, we've got quite a bit of um, space to to cover with paint there as well. And now I've changed into my working clothes. So um, I turned off the lights as you could see as well um, and the electricity in here because it's rather dangerous. You don't want electricity flowing if you go through all of this. That's why I already charged up all my LED lamps yesterday. And um, yeah, I say now I see a bit more spider webs. I'm gonna clean those up. And because we don't want spider webs being caught in our color and then we can pretty much start slowly getting the paint out and starting to paint. I can't believe this is like happening. I really can't believe this is happening. I'm so looking forward. <laughs> so I did decide to go for a beige color for the top of the wall and the ceiling. It doesn't differ very much from the one, I mean, yes, it is less yellow. It has more like a pinkish, reddish, kind of warm undertone. That's why I really like it. And I wanted to reuse the colors that I also have as a part of being economical, ecological, and also as a part of being more consistent throughout the whole chateau. So um, if you want to have a bit of consistency throughout your home, like try to reuse colors, try to have them everywhere sort of, you know, even if it's just a cushion or a vase or something that resembles this color, it will feel much more cohesive if you invite more of those colors that are spread throughout your home and not only in one single room. 
Alrighties, you guys, we have painted everything. Now we'll just wait for it to dry. And once it's dried, I want to install actually the new chandelier that we prepared in my last vlog because I need light in there to see. So I want to set that up already. Like this, we have a light and we don't depend on that LED light. And also all my electricity is kind of tied together in a weird way. All the ceiling lamps are all on the same circuit. So if I don't put something in there or if I, if I put on the circuit basically, um, I won't, I will have electricity on it, but um, there won't be light in the bathroom. So I really need some light in there. So I had to redo some of the electrics um, to fit our new beautiful, new old chandelier. And maybe I can rest it on top of here while I connect it. And um, yeah, I think I have to go a bit higher. Sorry that you can't see me. So let us try mounting this baby, this baby. Let there be light. It will look so, so cute when you come in. So that's kind of the first step. Oh, so nice, so nice. Now I have time to actually like focus on the vanity and um, try out this paint. <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to trying this out and trying to see how it looks and how it will act. And oof, I, I just can't wait to, to actually try it. And now that I'm seeing it, I'm also actually also considering maybe to paint the molding in a different color, but I'm not really sure. I'm kind of afraid that in this black or it's a very, very dark gray, it, the molding might get lost and it's kind of sad if it does. But I'm already like, I mean, like just installing this light here already makes it feel so much nicer and so cu much cuter. And already painting the ceiling a different tone already gave the room a totally different look. So um, yeah, let's carry on with the cabinet for me tomorrow, for you in a second. <laughs> Basically, before anything happens with the vanity, I first need to take everything out bit by bit. And I have looked at it and the fronts are connected with screws that I could take out. And then I can unscrew the handle. And this leaves me with just the sliding bit that I'm gonna just leave white actually. I'm not going to care much about like painting the inside because it's literally just a thing that we're gonna do from the outside. The product I found in France is by Maison Deco and it's called Relook Meuble Effet Bois and it's like a effect of wood. And I did look at or I actually watched a video of McKenna um, doing this. Exo McKenna, if you don't know her, I'll link her below because she's, she's like my DIY idol. <laughs> and um, she did it with a thing that's called Retique It. And I think you can only get it in the States. So if you're in the States and you want to um, have a uh, kind of wooden effect on something, then Retique It is your, your choice. If you're in Europe or especially in France, Maison Deco will be your choice. Um, and it comes with two things. It's a base and it's a finish. So the base creates this kind of look of wood and the finish just puts the color on top of it. And between those two, I need 12 hours of drying. So um, I'll probably won't be doing it until noon because I need to prepare everything as you could see, but um, then we can put the base and then the next day I can put the finish. I really want to do it precisely and to have a nice effect. So I'll just finish up like removing everything bit by bit and then I'll see you once everything is prepared to be painted.
Next step would be to clean everything with alcohol or spirit. And I have white spirit that's for cleaning as well. And I will clean all the surfaces that we want to be treating with this. So um, we have a nice and clean um, surface to work with. And yeah, that's it. Once I have cleaned this with white spirit, I am gonna leave this to dry for a bit. Um, as I said, we're not going to deal with the inside. The in-between pieces, I might just paint the same kind of like brownish color, but I will not use the effet bois on it, the um, effect of the wood. So we get the same coloration, but not, um, we don't need like wood effect then on the inside. So yeah, it's pretty much all clean now. This is so interesting. And it doesn't stink. So in combination with this paintbrush, it creates this texture that is wood-like, you know? It's not that it has, I think Retikit has um, bits of wood that are inside. I don't think this one has bits of wood. I think this one is more about creating a kind of fake texture on top of something. But I do have to say that it works really well. And that already you can see how it changes the look, you know? This is really interesting stuff. The round shape is a bit tricky. I think I've got it. <laughs> what you always have to keep in mind is where your, how your brush strokes are and that they are going in the same direction. Because if your brush strokes are going to be a mess, your wood kind of appearance will be a mess as well. We don't want that. Right, we just finished painting it all and this needs to dry 12 hours it says. I hope it's gonna turn out good. The ridges of the shelves and the doors, mm, I'm not quite sure but we'll see. We'll just see from there. Um, I'm not going to stress about it and um, we'll just see how it goes. I'll wash out this brush because I think we're going to need this brush also to apply the next coat, which is the finish coat, which will make it look like, which will give it the wood color. But you can already see the wood texture and I really don't smell anything. So this is like a really huge plus point. Let's just wait those 12 hours. It's 12 o'clock right now. So probably I'm gonna even let it dry overnight and then we'll do all the small bits and pieces to continue this reno. Welcome to my little strange atelier. It's really hideous outside, so I want to make it quick. Um, you saw that they, these are the buttons that have been on there. I mean, they're not buttons, they're door handles. Um, so I want to spray paint these in um, gold because it's going to be much more matching than this. You know, people who know me know that I'm not a very silver person. So I already bought like spray that works really well. I just wanted to do this quickly before I go for a walk with Anita. So let's get on to it. I'm going to put them out evenly so that we have them here. So we can spray them nice and easy. Always spray outside. <laughs> so.
So you guys, I just removed the old tap and I thought we'd take the drying time to put the new tap on. Isn't it cute? I found it in the bricot here. Um, and this is going to be our very new, beautiful, nice tap. So let's just install this. What is really important with water installation is to especially when you when you put it in here uh, to not overturn. If you're going to overturn, you're just going to break the seal and it will you will have leaky water. So water is always a thing of feeling. We've got running water. And hot is hot and cold is cold. It's a bit prettier than the last one. Mm. Welcome back to the darkness. As you can see, I already lifted off this cover and I'm planning to, and it's such a pity because if you look behind those, those are so beautiful skirting boats that they actually used on the other side. I think I already commented on that a while back. I do not understand this logic, but oh well, it's whatever it is. But we're going to paint these covers as well. And I'm, I'm still not sure if I want them black or if I want to paint them maybe some kind of poppy other color. I'm not sure. Or if we leave them like this, I'm like kind of like in between, but I still have cable left um, that I don't want to let go to waste because I want a um, plug on the other side close to the bathtub because or close to the radiator because I want to be able to plug a light there so that we have a different like light source to make it a bit more like yeah to have a bit nicer lighting in a bathroom especially in a bathroom that is has no window you really have to think about lighting and more indirect light to make it all look a bit more pretty um, so yeah i already my dad for this fancy japanese toilet which it's my parents idea they really wanted it they use my bathroom when they're here so um i just don't fight anymore about it you know it's I just let them do that and it's whatever it is and so that needed a plug socket so my dad made a plug socket there so I'm gonna just connect to that plug socket and drive up a cable to the other side to add another plug socket over there which we're gonna do exactly now Ugh. everything is installed and now I just need to fix my um, new plug socket. I think I want it around here. Quite a good position here. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a new plug. So you can see I removed this thing and uh, yeah, I don't know, I really don't know because first of all it's silver and I don't like silverware and there's a lot of things that I want to try. You might have noticed this new lamp, I bought this one um, also, so I just plugged it in a new plug that we did, that we made and um, the other silverware, the towel holder and the paper, toilet paper holder, I am going to um, spray paint. So that's the idea. But this one, I don't really see the purpose in it because it's above the radiator. I never used it for towels or anything because you can't put a towel here because it will just like, it's not high enough. If you put a towel in front of it, it's gonna hang all in front of the radiator and the radiator won't heat the room. And it's already small, that radiator, so no. So that's why I decided like, I think I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna close it all up and I want to find a way 
to attach my ladder that I have, the bamboo one, and kind of find a way here. Just the next morning, it's really cold outside, and it is time to put the next step on onto our cabinet, which is the finition, the finish. So it's kind of like this, I don't know if you can see it, it's this dark brown color, which I wanted. And apparently you also put it on with the brush and um, yeah, we're just gonna see. I'm gonna start at the side and then we'll show you how it goes. I'm so excited to try it and oh, I can't wait. I really can't wait. I still did a few corrections here and there that I thought like wasn't so well done yesterday after it dried a bit. So um, let's see how it goes now, once that it's completely dry. I'm not sure how it looks on camera, but in real life it's complicated. I mean, if you have um, a lot of straight lines, it's no problem because it's actually quite nice and easy. But as soon as you encounter a bit more wavy things, so I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, let's, let's see how the insides are going to turn out because I'm kind of like worried about them. You know, this, this kind of dips in the shelving. We'll see, we'll see how we'll deal with it. But the rest is actually like, if it's, if it's straight, it looks actually quite cute. So um, I'm kind of hoping that we'll get there. I think it's a matter of learn of learning and then we'll see how to do it. <laughs> Anything that's straight is actually not so much of a problem. But yeah, as soon as you have something that goes there, it just screws up the whole pattern. So you really need to be careful and mindful. I think that's not the problem with Ritiket. And I'm kind of thinking maybe It's just about finding the right place of the brush so that it, for these kinds of things, I would have needed smaller brush, I think. Maybe I'll go and have a look if I can take a, um, just a normal like small brush. So actually using a smaller brush and the big brush for the curves has worked quite well now. So I'm gonna continue doing that. <laughs> so I just gave it a second coat and it's looking quite good. It's really not easy, especially with the curves and everything and with the dips, it really wasn't easy. It isn't the easiest product. It's great for when you have a straight surface without any curves, without anything, then it's really like, super easy to work with the sides of the cabinet was like no time and it was and the effect of it is really nice but as soon as it becomes round and yeah all of this it's like that's when it gets tricky is it like the is it like you know it doesn't exactly look like wood but is it nicer yes is it a good budget thing to do I would still say yes because in the end it is saving money because I think this whole thing I think this yeah this color and like the whole package cost me 16 euros and I've got a whole new cabinet for 16 euros well the also the tap was about like I think 60 so yeah, and the tap I would have had to buy buy anyway, even if I would have done it, redone it myself. So um, it is a good solution. Is it forever? No, but I never planned for it to be forever. So it's all fine. So it's going to be a good like in between solution, I think. Now I just need to wait to for it all to dry completely, which will take a few hours and um, then let's hope once it's dry, I have this varnish 
here and it's a varnish especially made for um, kitchens and bathrooms and I've used this in the kitchen and it works really well and, and it's, a, it's without color so I'm gonna apply this varnish and what I still need to do is to do the surrounds of the plug plus the surrounds of the lights. And what I also just realized is maybe I want another plug on the top of this. So I'll need to check the electricity for that. Um, but yeah, I hope we can just like assemble everything together and I can show you the result. And um, then we have almost reached the end of this first part of the bathroom makeover, which already took me a few days um, with it's just like drying times and everything. These things take, can take time, you know? But it's okay. I knew it from the get-go. You guys, this first part is coming to an end and we've achieved a really rather nice look. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. Would I recommend it to anyone who wants a change? Yes, I would. Because in the end, it's cheaper and more economical and I would presume ecological to just change up a bit and just use this kind of paint it was 16 euros here in uh, France and um, just to try it out. I mean, yes, it does look a bit fake and it doesn't look like real wood, but I, it's a replica. A replica is always going to be a replica. So it's fine. I don't mind it. I wanted something that updates my bathroom to feel cozier. And this has achieved that by far. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, there will be next parts of this makeover following in the next Sundays ahead. And um, yes, thank you so much guys. And also check out my vlogs. They are on every Wednesday for now, where you get a lot of behind the scenes. You get to see my life, whatever, if you're interested. So. Thank you very much for watching. A bientôt et au revoir. See you next week. Bye.